the psychic type. Fast, hard hitting, with devastating psychic attacks and dex entries so confusing that even fellow psychic types can't keep up. And then there's Slowpoke. A slow Pokemon with a derpy smile, but a pretty interesting Pokemon. Most psychic types are lacking in physical attack, but for this dude, it's better at attack than its special attack. Its HP stat is massive, and its speed stat is overall horrible, but I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, right! Hello everybody and welcome, I am Brickerboom, and today we're going to try to beat the game Pokemon Fire Red with a single Slowpoke. As I said previously, Slowpoke has an awful speed stat, but a decent attack stat. Ideally, what I'll end up doing at some point is a slow bro run as well to test out what it's like when those stats flip-flop. Looking at Slowpoke, we have a relaxed nature, which lowers our horrible speed even further, and boosts our physical defense. With the lab battle, it's not difficult. We put him to sleep, say a few profanities with curse, and then use the boosted stats to take it down and win the battle. Also, I just want to go ahead and ask because I have been getting comments about the echo in the room, I've put up some more sound pads in the past week, I've also adjusted my mic a little bit, so hopefully that helps out. Let me know if it sounds any better whatsoever. With that, we go through the forest and double back to the rival fight not too long after. With the Pidgey, we get hit with Sand Attack, and then we use Yawn, then begin cursing to get some extra bulk. After a few curses, we begin our slow rampage, tackling our way through both his Pokémon, missing a few times along the way, but with plenty of HP to spare. While we go back through the forest, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to the channel. At the time of writing this, I had set a February goal of 730 subscribers, and thanks to my daily shorts of Pokemon reviews and the recent Relicanth video, I hit that six days into the month of February, which is super exciting. We're also really, really close to hitting Generation 2 by the time this video drops, probably. Along the way, I make sure to level up and get Water Gun. While our attack and defense is good enough, I don't think I would be able to take out Brock without some form of super effective attacking, even with Curse, but, yeah, well, now that I'm thinking about it, I might have actually been able to take it out with enough Curses, but it's fine. With Brock, Geodude is first, and we open up with Water Gun as it hits a weak tackle, and Water Gun takes it out. Next up is Onyx, and we get hit with Bind and fire back with Water Gun to take it down to win the first badge. Along the way, we learn Confusion, and I'm not sure if you've noticed from prior videos, but I've added a simple border around the top at the bottom of the video. It blocks out sensitive information that these totally legit Game Boy DSs commonly show, and now allows the full game screen to be viewed. Hope you all like this minor change, but if there's a different border, color or anything like that that you think may actually look a little bit better, let me know in the comments below. I, I don't want anything to interfere with the video quality, but let's go ahead and get back to the reason that you clicked on the video. We can't learn Mega Punch or Mega Kick until we evolved, or at least that's one factoid I remember the anime telling me that may or may not be true. We have two options, to either go fight Misty or go fight the rival. Given the fact that Misty has both Psychic and water types, well, the choice is pretty easy. The rival first sends out Pidgeotto, and we start with Confusion, getting an early Confuse off it as we get hit with Gust. Even if it hits itself once, that's some HP that we can conserve, and we do end up taking it down. Next up is Bulbasaur as it misses Sleep Powder, and we hit it with Confusion. Unfortunately, we get put to sleep and get hit all the way down to 8 HP before we can take it down. Unfortunately, all it takes from Rattata is a tackle and a quick attack, and that ends it for us. With that, we go to try and fight Misty, and it's not even close. I know the confusion luck is horrible, and we smack ourselves multiple times, and we do manage to take the Star U out, but with 3 HP to our name when it happens, the Star Me immediately takes us out. With that, it's a long line of attempts for us in this area of the game. We can't move any further until we beat the rival, Unfortunately, the rival typically puts us to sleep and then leech seeds us, then Vine Whip can take us down. On the flip side of that, if we go to try fight Misty, that goes somehow worse given the fact that she can outlast us. 
Even if we whittle away some of Starmie's health with our attacks, it has recover, and Misty also has potions that she's able to use. So with no other choice, we end up leveling all the way up to 25. With our current level, we can take the Pidgeotto out in three confusions. The only reason that we went against the Bulbasaur is that both of the sleep powders that are used miss us, which lets us take it out. Rattata goes down in two more confusions, and then when Abra comes out, we can take it out in a couple water guns to win the battle and finally have a way to move on. As we go through the bridge ahead, the good news is we can level up some along the way before we go back to fight Misty. I'm realizing now that I probably should have at the very least kept Tackle, because while it is weak, it's a physical neutral move that I could have used against Misty. These runs are far from perfect, but it's something that we can apply to future runs. Another bit of good news is that if we don't level up enough with the route ahead, we can head to the south to level up some more on the ship. But let's take a look and see if we actually need those levels. Misty sends out Staryu, and a critical hit Confusion takes it out, and because of taking it out, we can actually learn Headbutt, which we replace Water Gun with. After that, we take Misty to red a few times with Headbutt, get hit with Water Pulse, avoid the Confusion, and then take it out. Now we're getting somewhere. While Headbutt isn't the most powerful move, it does have the ability to cause flinching. <laughs> Just kidding. If you think we're ever going to be outspeeding anything that we're not 30 levels above, you must not know how slow Slowpoke is, especially with a relaxed nature. Come on. Aboard the ship, we don't fight too many people on the ship as usual. We have a lot of optional battles coming up along the way, and as long as we can make it past Surge, we can get the power for normal move return, we can also swap out Confusion for Psychic, and if needed, there's also plenty of TMs available for purchase in the game corner or in the department store, but we have a rival to fight before we can start planning any of that. Pidgeotto is first and goes down to two headbutts, only getting hit with a gust in return. Unfortunately, we get put to sleep by Ivysaur not once, but twice, but... Due to waking up first turn both times, we're able to take it down. Raticate flinches us with Hyper Fang in the next two attacks. We don't suffer flinching and manage to take it down with 14 HP to spare. After that, Kadabra's last and for whatever reason uses and misses Disable, so we can just take it out with a headbutt. After that, we grab a Cut, a Diglett, and then make it to Surge's Gym. We take down the additional trainers, spend very little time on the trash can puzzle, and then go to fight Surge. Surge first sends out Voltorb and we open up with Dig, taking it out in one turn. Pikachu opens with Double Team, but we push past that and then take it out. Then the Raichu opens up with Double Teams, and thankfully we push past it. It's Double Teams, and we knock it out for our third try victory. Pikachu isn't powerful, but Static can be rough when you have a two-turn move. If I remember right, though, in Generation 1, because it's held together with construction paper glue and macaroni noodles, if you get hit with Paralysis and then use Fly or Dig, and you get paralyzed while you're in that turn underground or in the air, until you use that move again, you just can't take damage, if I'm remembering right. Onyx is up first, and we open with Psychic as it misses Bind, but Psychic does take it to red. Onyx hits a soft rock throw and then goes down. Kangaskhan is next, and we use Return doing very little. Next turn, Kangaskhan bites us, and we use Curse to bulk up a little bit. Kangaskhan bites again, and we swap back to return to take it down due to a critical hit. Rhyhorn is last, and uses Tail Whip, but ultimately goes down to Psychic. After that, we're once more presented with a choice. We can either go back to Lavender Town and fight the rival, or we can attempt Erika's Gym. We head to Erika's Gym, and I'm hopeful that we can basically mind blast our way through the gym. Erica first sends out Victory Bell and uses Poison Powder as we use Psychic to take it down in one shot. Vile Plume is next and we get hit hard with Giga Drain and we hit it with Psychic to take it to red. Erica then heals up and we get pinged by Poison Damage before going down to another Giga Drain. Back to the rival then. Pidgeotto hits a Gust and Quick Attack before going down. Ivysaur hits us hard with Razor Leaf but we survive since it's not a critical hit and then take it down with Psychic. Gyarados hits Bite, goes to red from the Psychic, hits us again with Bite, and then we take it down. The Growlithe is out and goes down to a single shot, 
And then Cadaver disables Psychic, but thankfully we had swapped over to Return and were able to take it down in one shot to win the battle and move on. Granted, it was four attempts in, but a win is a win. Moving through the rest of the tower is pretty easy, given the fact that most of the Ghastly use Curse and then get taken down with Psychic. And this is the part where I lost some footage, but all you'd be missing is a lot of lost attempts against Koga. We do some leveling up through some of the trainers, and given how badly we're getting taken down by Koga, we actually head back to Erika, and that's where the footage picks back up. Back to Erika, and this time around we get poisoned right away, but given our level, but given our levels, we're able to take down each of our Pokémon with one Psychic apiece. Even with the fact that we're taking them down quick, we still got knocked all the way down to 64 HP. Ultimately, Slowpoke is a decent Pokémon, stat-wise, but in a solo run, this is rough. The slow speed means that no matter what happens, we're gonna have to tank some hits and try our best not to get knocked down. After that, we find a few more trainers and even hit up the fighting gym. After that, it's back to Koga, and we've reached level 48. Now we outspeed the coughing and take it down in one shot. Muck uses Minimize and Acid Armor, but we do take it down, only getting hit with Sludge. We could take the coughing down in one Psychic, and the Weezing and I trade attacks back and forth, but we end up taking it down. Now we're starting to reach a little bit of an interesting point in the game, because we're running out of trainers that we can grind against, and we can either try to finish up Sylphco, or go to fight Blaine. We of course try the rival, and Pidgeot uses Feather Dance as we hit Return. We swap over to Psychic as it hits Wing Attack, and we do end up taking it out. When Venusaur comes out, it puts us asleep, and then Razor leaves us into Oblivion. Well, I thought we'd do at least a little bit better. Let's head to Cinnabar Island. We fight through the trainers of the gym, and then it's time to fight the big bad bald man himself, and it goes horribly. We manage to take Growlithe down to red once, but Blaine heals up. The problem is, we get flinched so many times that we barely do anything to it. And now, with that, we are quickly out of options. We go back and forth between Sylphco and Cinnabar Island, and we have to level up quite a bit along the way. Truthfully, it's this lack of speed that's making the challenge really difficult, because we do have a setup move that unfortunately lowers our horde speed even further, so no matter what, we just have to keep tanking hits. And at level 70, we can take Growlithe down in one Psychic. Arcanine takes two hits, but this time we don't get flinched off of Bite a hundred times. With Ponyta, it hits Fire Blast, but it goes down in one shot. And Rapidash misses Fire Blast, and we're able to take it out to win the badge, and then we go ahead and head back to Sylphco. At this level, we can take Pidgeot down in two Psychics, getting hit with two Wing Attacks along the way. We get hit hard with Razor Leaf, but now we're able to take the Venusaur out in one Psychic. When Gyarados comes out, we get hit with Dragon Rage, hit it to yellow with Psychic, and get hit with another Dragon Rage before taking it out. Growlithe just hits a soft takedown and goes down to a single dig, and last is Alakazam, who only sets up Calm Mind before going down to a single return. After that, we can head back to the bed and heal up before going back to fight Giovanni. Giovanni sends out Nidorino that goes down to Psychic, and Nido Queen does the same. Kangaskhan and Rhyhorn both go down to one-shots as well, but at this level, it wasn't too much of a concern given our bulk. It was just Blaine and the rival that was the biggest issue. We did end up taking hits from every single one of them, except Rhyhorn but thankfully we didn't get punished too badly. After that, given the fact that the gym is open, we go to fight Sabrina. Sabrina's team is also a pretty easy sweep overall. The only Pokemon that puts up a fight is Mr. Mime, and that's because it uses Barrier, and Sabrina keeps healing, but eventually she stops, it hits us once, then goes down, and then after that, the Alakazam also goes down to a one-shot. Last of the gym leaders is Giovanni, and once again, we're able to one-shot sweep through his Pokémon, taking some hits along the way. The defensive nature definitely helps us take those hits, since we're too slow to outspeed literally anything, so I'm thankful that we at least had a couple easy gyms. The rival first sends out Pidgeot, and it goes down to two Psychics as we get hit with two Wing Attacks. 
When the Venusaur comes out, thanks to not critting, we survive off Razor Leaf, and we take Venusaur to yellow. We survive in the red with the second Razor Leaf, and swap over to Psychic to take out the Rhyhorn. Gyarados comes out and sets a Brain Dance as we take it to about half, and it misses Hydro Pump, so we can take it to red. Hydro Pump then connects to take us to 5 HP, and then the Growlithe is out and up, and uses Takedown to officially knock us out and put an end to that particular attempt. So... We have a plan. The main part of the plan is the fact that we've kept Curse for so long, and we begin setting up a sweep, and hopefully avoid getting sand attacked. So, with Pidgeot, we take the chance to set up our six Curses as it hits us with Wing Attack, and you can see the damage getting lessened considerably. After that, we can take it out. Venusaur is next and sets up Growth rather than attacking, so that lets us go ahead and take it out in one shot. Our speed is so low due to Curse, Rhyhorn actually outspeeds us and uses Takedown, but we can take it out with a single Psychic. Gyarados sets up Rain Dance as we hit it with Psychic and lower its special so we can knock it out next turn. Growlithe can't do much with Flame Wheel due to the rain, so we knock it out in one shot. Last up is Alakazam, and it only sets up Calm Mind before going down to win the battle and let us move on. As we go through Victory Road, we actually remember to grab any extra TMs this time we may need. And with that, it's time to go ahead and try our hand at facing Lorelei. We first test damage with Earthquake against Dugong as it sets up Hail. After that, it uses Safeguard as we set up a few curses, then hits us with Surf as we swap to return to take it out. Lapras hits us with Ice Beam, and we can take it below half as the Citrus Berry heals it out of range as we get hit with an Ice Beam, but then we take it out. Cloyster just sets up Spikes and stalls with Protect, so it goes down rather easily. Then Slowbro, we take it to almost red as it uses Amnesia. It then swaps to Yawn as we take it out. Jinx is up and thankfully misses Lovely Kiss, so then we can knock it out. It feels real good beating Lorelei first try. Let's see how we do with Bruno. Once again, we have to take the chance to set up multiple curses as we get whittled away by Earthquake, and then we take it down with our own Earthquake. Hitmonchan is up, and we take it out with a single return. Hitmonlee hits us with Mega Kick, and then we can take it out. Onyx hits us with Earthquake, and we return the favor with our own Earthquake. And then with Machamp, we take it below half as the berry activates and heals it out of range. After that, we swap over to Psychic, which thankfully does take it out, winning us the battle and letting us move on. Two down, three to go. Agatha time. Gengar sets up double team, but we still manage to hit it to red and Agatha heals up. We do take it back to red and Agatha heals up again. We do get sucker punched in the process, but we can take it out without much of a problem. As Goldback comes out, we get hit with Confused Ray, smack ourselves, and then we do take it down with a critical hit return. Arbok hits us and poisons us with Sludge Bomb, and we take it to red. It hits another Sludge Bomb, and we do take it out, but we get taken out from the poison damage. From here, it's loss after loss. The double-teaming Gengar is an issue, the Arbok is an issue, and then there's still another Gengar and Haunter in the background, and we end up having to level up quite a bit, given how badly every single attempt goes after that. So finally, at level 80 and 5 attempts in, we set up Curse for a few turns for the few Pokémon that can be knocked out with Return or Earthquake, Thankfully, we don't get punished too much by that and take the Gengar out in one shot. Golbat hits us with Confuse Ray, and thankfully, we don't get punished for that either, and we take it out with one return. Arbok uses Screech, and we swap over to Earthquake to take it down. Gengar goes to red and misses Hypnosis, then hits the next Hypnosis. We fall into a Nightmare, but thankfully wake up quickly and take it out in one shot. Last is Haunter, and it puts us to sleep and then uses Curse. After that, we get taken down to low yellow, but we manage to wake up and then finally take it out so we can move on. This is where, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead. We get absolutely destroyed by Lance time after time, and even at level 100, it's a little bit of a gamble. And there's about an hour of footage here with me just getting destroyed time and time again that I'm just going to go ahead and skip over. Um, obviously there's going to be a little bit of footage here playing so you can see how badly we get creamed, but let's go ahead and take a look at a few attempts into level 100. Gyarados starts off by using Bite and Dragon Rage, and we take the time to set up three curses and then swap to return to take it out. 
One Dragonair uses Safeguard and goes down to Ice Beam. The other Dragonair uses Dragon Rage, then goes down to an Ice Beam as well. Dragonite uses Outrage and takes us down to Nintendo 64 HP, and we can take it out on one Ice Beam. Last is Aerodactyl, and it uses Ancient Power, getting the Omni Boost, which is horrifying as we take it to Yellow. Thankfully, due to our own boost that we did previously, we don't get taken down with Wing Attack, and then we do take it down to win the battle, and move on to the champion. And even with speed ups, this still took about an hour. Pidgeotta's first and hits us with Wing Attack as we set up Curse. We get hit with Sand Attack, which isn't great, and we make sure that we don't get too many accuracy drops, because then we will basically lose. So we swap over to Return to take it out in one shot. Arcanine uses Bite, and we take it to Red as the Arcanine heals up, and then we take it down with a crit. Venusaur sets up Sunny Day, but immediately goes down to Return. Gyarados does lower our attack, so taking it out does take a few turns, as it uses Dragon Rage for the guaranteed damage. Next is Alakazam, who sets up Reflect, but then goes down to a critical hit. Last up is Rhydon, who uses Earthquake, and it does take two Psychics to take it down, with only 41 HP to spare. That challenge was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, if I'm being completely honest. I had always thought that Slowpoke would be a much easier Pokemon to beat the game with, but I still had a lot of fun with this one. I've been working the new job and still trying to get content out, and then as a glimpse into my personal life, I'm starting up a new D&D campaign again that I am very stoked about. For next week's challenge, a friend did suggest a solo mill tank run for the game since we did a Tauros run last week. Make sure to check that out if you haven't because it has been getting absolutely destroyed by the YouTube algorithm. Make sure to like this video as well because that's the only way these videos typically get any traction. If you want to be able to support me outside of Twitch and YouTube, the Patreon link is going to be below. It allows you to get an avatar. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with it, to be 100% honest with you. I don't really know, so I need suggestions. Check out Twitch, Discord, all that. And as always, if you like the video, even if you didn't like the video, hit the like and subscribe button because it really does help me out. And until next time, everybody, peace out.